longer. Let's uh, uh, a little bit of an annoyance that this call is today conflicted with Think to Think Research Group, where IoT MUD is being um, discussed. But uh, I'm sorry about that. I, we could we could have screamed it louder, and I noticed that in my schedule yeah. yesterday. I was like, oh shit. All right. Well, I think this is the important. Is this a this is defined claim? Um, we had a lot of conversation about. I thought we had a lot of conversation on the list about claims. And am I wrong? There's a bunch, a lot of messages going by which I didn't catch up on yet yesterday. Um. So is there, is there, is this all good? Are we good at this? No, I don't think we're good. We can't be good with this. I think it's okay now. Yeah. I have to. Look, if you just go to the, if you go to the files, most of the changes are gone and it's easy to review now under the files view. Piece of a certain information, often form of a name value. And then a bunch of changes to conveys. It's now pretty simple. So that's what I said. Now it looks okay to me. Okay, so you're happy with that. All right. Uh I'll it's not I don't think it's mergeable. It's rebased. Uh, with the often that is good enough. Doesn't go down the red hole of semantic whatever okay all right so i will we'll we'll get that merged in a minute does someone want to pick another yes. issue i haven't really looked at this until just now um wouldn't you want to say it's it describes the target mm. claim is about the attestation target no because it doesn't necessarily sometimes it's a claim about another claim so for example a claim inside of the attestation result might be a timestamp at which the uh, verifier uh, did the verification of the target, and so technically it's a time, it's a piece of information about the attestation about the verifier in that case. So I'd say, not necessarily no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I would feel better if it was like often about the target. Um, I think it's already, my opinion is that it's already clear where the word claim is used in, say, evidence or the word claim is used in the, you know, definitions of other things. Yeah. Okay. And why, why again are we um, being, saying often in, in the form of a name value pair? When, when might it not be? Um, in... Yeah, in, in CWT, it's not a name, it's an integer, right? Okay, also, case was in some cases, the claim wouldn't have a value, it would just have a token, it would just have a tag. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't always have a value either, I think was the point. Okay. Uh, everything is conceivable here. You could, uh, the, the, the third item in the sequence could have semantic value. Uh, meaning, sorry, meaning, therefore, yeah, there's yeah. a value. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine, thank you. Okay. Right, so well, somebody could define a claim format that has a, a triple, not just a name value pair, but it could be a name value timestamp pair for, or triple. Anyway. Well, I mean, I, I was always, always taking the value to be, you know, it could be a, a three levels of n a map nesting. <laughs> But right. let's um, let's jump into this to issue, Lawrence, since you have the floor as to what you opened it since we last uh, had our. Um, before we're done, but in the call, I'm mean, not necessarily right now, but before we're done, I would like to think up on what the next steps are in the timing uh, pull request. Agreed. You want to tell us, Lawrence, what you have in mind here? Uh, well, uh, let's see, I think there's some point there's some text close to what I wanted. 
um, just uh, uh, yeah, so uh, there it is, yeah. So I mean, I wasn't really clear about how all the inputs to a verifier were constructed, and I wasn't clear whether the uh, known good values were like missing, were supposed to be part of an endorsement or part of the, the, the policy. Um, so, uh, you know, and that whether they were, you know, inputs, you know, how, that, how they came as inputs to the verifier. So, um, uh, in the uh, post here was just to say that, uh, Known good values can come, uh, yeah. Good. Known good yeah, values can can come as um, endorsements or as uh, um, in in the form of policy and kind of <clears throat> what <clears throat> what a known good value is, just in a very loose way. That's all. So was there text that you thought that we should change then? Um, I think there should be some text like that paragraph. Those two paragraphs I wrote should be inserted somewhere in, into the document, yeah. I don't know which two paragraphs now you're pointing at. Uh, it says, you had it, it was there. Now you're, where it keeps moving, so. Near, it's near the bottom of the. There we go. Okay, so one paragraph is uh, for some claim values that the verifier will, those two. Yes. Where does it go? So I still have issues with this topic. Right. Before you paste it in, well, you can paste it in, but I'm saying I won't. Uh, uh, I think this is only a small subcase of the overall thing and it focuses in my opinion too much on a tiny subcase um, because the appraisal policy will deal with a bunch of logic for determining trustworthiness some things might be tests for equality some things may be tests for uh, not equals some things might be tests for member of set some things might be within a range some things might be less than some things might be greater than, and some things might be comparisons against things that are not uh, fixed values, but values of other claims. And I think this text currently over focuses on a particular case where it's a equality against a constant, which is only one of many different cases um, in the appraisal policy. And so, where do I get the set values from? Where do I get the range values from? Where do I get the inequality values from? Where do I get the names of the other things from? All of those things could be conveyed as part of an endorsement or part of an appraisal policy, just like this subcase. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. And so well, the problem all is I'm the word is that compare. This is not. This is not in any way correct. Sorry, it's not in, in any way incorrect. It's just not. It's not complete, and it over focuses on a tiny piece. Not that anything in here I disagree with the statement of. All these things are correct statements. I, I agree with everything Dave said, except tiny piece, because both. The, all the big FIDO thing and the RIF thing uh, are expecting some constants to compare with. Having said this, you're absolutely right, but I don't think that giving this as a prominent example is bad, therefore. But I am not uh, pushing this into the document because I agree basically with your opinion, Dave, but I also don't think I am against this, so I'm neutral on this side. I, I am fine with saying, you know, with explaining the general case and saying, for example, and you're saying this is just the example that we picked because it's a prominent example. So I, I agree with you on that one, Hank. Okay. But then it would be sort of subsequent to the more general uh, description, meaning like a paragraph or something that would come before this. Uh, and a par if a paragraph comes before this, then you'd probably change uh, a sentence or two in this one because it would be sort of redundant of what would be in the paragraph before that wasn't specific to no good values. Say, this is a good start or whatever. It might be paragraphs two and three of uh, a three paragraph edition. Yeah, totally agree. Okay. Um, so I thought this, this text might go ahead. 
my, my question to Lawrence is because I think you raised this quite long discussion at the very beginning. Are you interested in creating those exemplary text uh, prefix paragraphs? Um, if I didn't have another document to author and spend all my time on, um, I would I would really would do it. Uh, but I just feel like <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So so if, here's, if nobody, a, sorry, here's, here's sorry, a proposal. If nobody else gets a proposal, we do it by this time next week. Well, it, let me know if you, maybe you want to fix what I just did. So I put it at the end of endorsements. I put your paragraph and I preceded it with, for example. Question is why does it belong in endorsements if part of what it's saying is that they don't just come from endorsements but also can come from policy? Well, I was just that's what I was trying to figure out myself. So. Um, seems like it would go in Where's this section on the verifier role. Let me see what that one says. Okay, so I think that the, I'm just going to, while you're thinking about this, I'm going to think that the, um, we need to get to the time examples. Just above two types of environments heading. There's a paragraph, two paragraphs above there. And I'm wondering if it could be combined into a large paragraph there. Yeah, but that's the other place that it might be. Your thing. Two paragraphs above the heading. I'm wondering. Verifier uses evidence and any endorsements from endorsers by applying an evidence appraisal policy to the trustworthiness of the attester and generates attestation results for use by rallying parties. The evidence appraisal policy might be obtained from an endorser along with the endorsements or might be obtained via some other mechanism, such as being configured in the verifier by an administrator. I think it's part of that topic. Because it's talking about how you obtain the evidence appraisal policy, and anything that would be known good values would be considered to be part of the evidence appraisal policy. Directly or indirectly, if it's referenced by it. Someplace in the document that's referenced from this paragraph, but in this paragraph might be simplest. It just might become a long paragraph. But that would be okay. What's what's the missing bit of information? You mean why are we putting this in? Uh, what's not here that you know? It's, what what are we trying to put in that isn't already here? Is this what you have in mind, Dave? That's the location that I had in mind. Um, I'd have to read through it once or twice because it would to make sure the transition between the last highlighted paragraph and the first unhighlighted paragraph works, or if those need to be combined and without the paragraph breaks. But that's the location I was looking at. Yeah. The, the point of the text is so the reader can have some understanding of how known good values fit in to the attestation architecture. And this is only for people who are already familiar with some term known good values to relate to this. If you're not familiar with known good values, the text is not necessary. Is that fair? 
Yeah, or maybe you should also re refer to uh, RIM. <clears throat> so the, the question is, how many what? how many um, synonyms do we need? Right. I I prefer to not have too many synonyms. It's specifically by reference to some external document. You know, yeah, this is the same as what you know. For example, such and such in such and such standard um, calls this this term. It's like up in the terminology, we said, you know, C, RFC, whatever definition of whatever. Well, we should definitely refer to RAM because that's in the TCG documents. Okay. Should you do that instead of term known good values, or is there some standard that uses the known good value? <clears throat> there are various TCG documents that have used the term. What? Okay. Do you have two synonyms for the same thing, or are they different definitions? Uh, well, I think I think the current current um, direction is to tr try and try and agree on on some common terms. Uh, they they do have they do have a lot of synonyms, and it's not clear whether there's subtle differences between them. So it's they're trying not to, even you know, clear whether trying to then maybe we don't want to get into that. It's you know at this at this level it's all conceptual, and unless people think that we need to go down a path of defining you know the subtlety subtle differences between them, no, I mean, don't want to do that. I would rather that we just try to stick with endorsement, <clears throat> just be descriptive about you know what that concept means examples of as appropriate but um uh you know have to cut off the conversation i've created this pull request it has the text some text in both sections um i'd like to suggest that we need to go on to the time sequence discussion okay i can review like the Last paragraph that you copied, I think it's completely redundant with the last sentence of the paragraph there, but I can comment that. In I, the, in the yeah, I don't, there, so. I don't disagree with you. Um, I'm just wanted to get in it yeah. somewhere. Um, um, possible. Uh, and this was, what was it? 78. Okay. Um, so, um, had I think some lots of good text on the time sequence and I'm our discussion on it. I'm just not sure if we have a conclusion at this point. The pull request on that time stuff has the things that were in uh, there's two categories of uh, timestamp things that uh, were presented in the uh, inter meeting. There are things that are um, that there's already text saying how to use, and that there were things that were uh, questions about whether they were needed. There was there were the ones that were in gray and the ones that were not in gray, right? So right now this one would have the ones that are not in gray, and the question is, can we merge the ones that are not in gray while we keep discussing the ones that were in gray? So that's that's the question here. Is I don't necessarily think that this pull request has to have the complete list before it gets merged. In other words, because that would just delay uh, merging things until then. If there are pieces of it that we agree on, can we at least merge the pieces that we all agree are are, are covered well? So that's my question here. Is there outstanding things? Are the ID ones, do they match with some other things? Are there changes that are needed for the minimal subset here? Um, even if we then continue with a separate per request and other things. This is Hank. I remember non-gray means I think purple, and there were four of them, and I would like to have them in. So the the so Gary, it was you that was doing the presentation on this one, wasn't it? Um, no, it was Eric, one of you guys. Um, I, it was the things that we both had the same letters for were the ones that are in the text in here, and the ones that were the iffy ones, the ones we didn't have text saying how to use. And those were purple, and I think that uh, there's no disagreement on the things that are not purple. There are people who've spoken up on the list for purple items, but uh, we haven't closed on them. I have no problem with adding the ones that are not yeah. controversial. I see no pushback on them. So my 
is the ones that they're that are in purple should be in a different pull request and shouldn't be merged until after there's text that references them. Um, and so this one, I would claim this pull request is meant for the ones not in purple, but it's already text. And so the question is, um, for the ones not in purple, are there things? Are there is there text that we need to change in here? Or can we merge the not purple ones and use a separate pull request for discussion of purple ones? Uh, I'm okay with that. I think I think the only thing I'm, um, you know, feel strongly about is that the table itself should be in the specification in the in the you know in the architecture, not in an appendix. The examples could be in an appendix. Anyone else um, care to weigh in on that? I'm fine either way. Um, you know, to me, an appendix uh, can be referenced and used. So uh, I don't care about where the text sits. Um, I uh, don't like having things in the body of the document that don't have any discussion of it. So if it's a floating diagram with no text about it. And so um, if you'd like to um, generate a pull request that moves it and then it has some text, but I don't know what that text would say. <clears throat> There's text above it. The argument of pulling in the gray ones was that text is using them. No, so, nothing, nothing uses the purple ones. When I said gray, it's purple, right? So, um, yeah, exactly. So there's the right no reason to put here. it in the body because it's used uh, by your argument, I think. So I, I actually, this is an information document. So having something in the body and the appendix is not basically a difference. In, a, in the um, standards document, it is more or less like a difference. But so uh, this the, actually doesn't make. Purple ones, so if purple ones are used by a particular solution document or protocol document, the protocol document is welcome to, but I didn't see a need to put it in the architecture unless there's some generic architectural statement that could be uh, made about them. And so that's not, what, and what, if two, what if two, what if two, and it's a two that is a solution draft and it will use them most certainly. So, um, yes, I assume, assume that uh, actually there might be more to them. I just have to do it. So uh, if I get the task of making sure there is text for the purple ones and I will cross-reference and check it with Tuda, what we need there, uh, I will take on the task of creating the second pull request after the gray pull request. So, so section, section 9 is on freshness and the table basically fits in section 9. Um, it is also true. I have no objection to putting it into there as long as there is text in section 9 that specifically talks about the table. I think it's yeah, yes. whatever row, but I need to talk about the existence of the table and what the what the table is trying to express and and so on. I'm okay. I'm a, I'm willing to take a stab at a paragraph. To then it. I guess what I would propose then is uh, unless there's any other things that it sounds like I would propose we merge this one. Then Ned, you generate a new pull request that's moving a table with the, what you're looking at, and Hank, you can do other pull requests if you think it belongs in this document as opposed to in the Tudor document. And so we just do those in multiple pull requests. Uh, okay, but I cannot pull something into something that is not yeah yet. So we have to sequence it a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. I, I would like to merge this one so there's a baseline. Yeah, good. And then there will be the move. And then there will be the addition. Well, good. Agree. That, that, that's what I'm proposing anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. The structure to the madness. So, <laughs> so is there text that we need to omit from this pull request? No. So it's good the way it is. That, that's what I'm hearing because, uh, for example, what Ned would do is he would then move the text because once it's already merged, then it's easy to find and just move it into an earlier section and add some other text around it. That's what I heard Ned volunteering to do. Yep. I cannot okay. guarantee the text will be, be exactly the same after the, uh, I don't know, after my pull request, the, the purple yeah. pull request. And, yeah. But uh, I will highlight if I think something is edited worthy. Yeah, we, we can review it once you have the pull request. That's fine. Yep. Hey, right. thanks, guys. So thanks that was merged. That was much easier. Okay. And we have, um, do do I need to write down these additional pieces of things that you're going to do? 
Um, sure, it'd be nice and, to just reference, you know, in the in the one that you just merged, if you or actually was there a uh, issue for it? No, that I remember. In, in one of the two of them, just so it sends some email or whatever, at an you know at Eric and at uh, Hank with their what they said they were going to do. Will I don't remember. And Ned, look into uh, additions around purple items. Yeah. Okay. N Ned to work on moving table to section nine and. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's come back to pull requests then. That was new. Differentiation between combining roles and topological roles. That was just before our last meeting. What is this about? Want to talk to this? Thank you. Um, oh, no. Yeah, I, will, I would talk about this if I would have done more. That's the idea. Yeah. It's got some requests for changes on it that haven't been done yet. And so I don't know if you want to punt this one till next time or what? Yeah, yeah we punt this. Hey, this is, back we'll, to this. we'll do more work later. It was just vacation weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Update. What is it you want us to do, Ned? That it was done. Um, rewording. Yeah, you can see it's really hard to review. So this is why I keep telling people don't combine source lines because you can see all you can look, all it looks like is all those were concatenated into one yeah. line. You can't tell what the changes are. Yeah, the best, the best, the best, best choice, of the line breaks. <laughs> the best choice is to start new paragraphs uh, on new line breaks because, uh, and then whether you leave a paragraph per line or let it go over multiple lines is up to you, but don't combine them like that. Yeah. Now, here actually, it, I, I think the text was completely rewritten. I think it is a, a replacement paragraph, but that's not obvious until you stare at it a bit. So, okay. Do you want to? That's the only change, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, we can talk about this one if you want, because this is the whole change, right? It's just this one paragraph in the definition of in the section around evidence, right? I don't know if I had any comment other than the please add line breaks. I can't remember. Just... And a, a couple of words that I wanted, meaning I, uh, I'd asked a question about what does that still in here? Is the word circumvent still in here? Yeah. Ah, okay. So there have been a couple of changes uh, since the last time I reviewed it. Okay. Um, Uh, actually, not going to change. Okay. So, for example, anytime that it talks about target device in here, I had that become target environment. Uh, for a couple of times, so you can see I uh, suggested changes to be accepted in my review. Uh, apply changes suggested by Dave T. I think that you, that happened. You want me to go to here? There you go. There. Okay, 
device become environment, okay? It, it talks about a, and target device, and it should be talking about a testing environment and target environment. Yeah, I agree. I think there's two of those in here, as we can see. That's one of them, and I think there's another one further down. That way, if the target device becomes environment, can somehow can lie about them. Am I the right paragraph? We're on line 62 in the top half of your screen. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to make sure I'm in the right place in the document itself. Make the change directly. Um, you know, I've I've checked out the pull request. Ah, oh, okay, I see. Sorry. Um, you can right here. You just say commit suggest. Oh, I see. Let me change. I think I hit another one down there, but not that one. Uh, and then at the top, there was another one. Correct, the right word. Uh, is there another one? <clears throat> down at the bottom. Ah, yeah. uh, as you've done that too, we'll collapse them off of the. I think that just did them. Did that yeah, yeah. as well? Yep. Yep. Uh, so I think way is right there. Where should be changed to be when? I, I voted to uh, request there. Yeah. Interval when. Changes occur. Okay. Uh, I think I picked on two other words down uh, in comments. Uh, yeah, I think comes right there as well. On the uh, Says uh, evidence is evaluated by a verifier to establish its relevance, correctness, and correctness. And my comment was, well, I think we need a word other than correctness, right? Uh, untrustworthy, right? You can say it's correctly out of date or whatever, right? So I'm trying to do is it's trying to establish relevance, trustworthiness, something like that, and time. Compliance, probably the best word I can think of. I think compliance is a good word. Okay. How did you do the this? Um, change the compliance. I can do edit in my uh, thing, and then you can do the commit suggestion. Uh, uh, okay. I can edit in my editor too, but that's fine. Okay. What would it would I did it in my editor. So, okay, so that's done. Okay, great. Okay. And the other one, it's a, and it's reliable that if the target device somehow can lie about them, and that was already changed to target environment up above, right? So that way, if the target environment can somehow lie about them, the testing environment is able to detect it or a circuit lie. So we're talking about. Not the one that's being evaluated. Um, what I mean for the thing that's trustworthy to send to something else, yeah, I agree, lying, so I didn't get part of what was intended there. It's able to detect. It's able to detect the lie. That's what we're trying to talk about. I think it's appraisal power. Right? Uh, reading, I guess. Either one could detect. So we send 
sentence or replace the sentence with something else? And if so, what do we replace it with? It's still correct to say just. Just detect it. Or detect this. I think the point is the point of the word circumvent is to say that the the um, verifier has the ability to uh, once you know once it detects lying it has the ability to um, respond in some meaningful way such as locking that device out or something. This is a statement about the attesting environment. Yeah, so. The target environment can somehow lie about claims or evidence to them. And them being claims, I guess, say claims. Yeah. I put that in as claims. Yeah. It's on the call. I don't know if you want to say more about what the intent was. That way, if the target environment can somehow lie about the claims, the testing environment is not misled. It's... Yeah, basically. <clears throat> In other words, the, the testing environment has the ability to, it is supposed to be designed in a way that it has the ability to know uh, that it's getting, that it's, that it's uh, you know, collecting the claims without relying on the target environment to, to tell them. Yeah, I'm wondering if this notion about lying about them is uh, a little bit itself misleading, right? Because yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the claims is the attesting environment is doing the measure itself. It's not actually asking the target environment. Now you can do it that way. But we've had that discussion before. It's not that's not the more secure way to do it, right? And so uh, I, I'm wondering if this direction that's not the direction that we want. So maybe what we really want to say is. Claims are collected by the target environment. Sorry, claims are collected about the target environment by the t a testing environment. Um, That's reliable. Yeah. Pardon me? Nope, oh, you had it right. What was the last part? Um, claims are collected. About the target environment by the testing environment. Dot, dot, dot. Claims are collected about the target. I'll put it on the screen just a moment. About the target environment by the testing environment uh, in, in a way that prevents the target environment from lying. I'm Good. fine with that. Or from being uh, misled. Or being misled, yeah. I think uh, there is other parts of that paragraph that were that were mentions lying, so but yeah, misled is fine. I'm sorry. I, I think you changed the uh, I think you changed it from the tense and that didn't work. I think I liked your first phrasing better, Michael. Uh, I'm going to paste it so then you can tell me whether I got it right. So I just looking for this place where I just I, I bumped my mouse wheel and scrolled. Am I in the right even in the right thing here? No, I'm not. You're, no, point. you're in defined claim. Six eighty four, six eighty four ish. There we go. Um, all right, so this part is not correct. It's uh, the it, testing from, environment. Lying, from lying, it would be correct about the target because it says prevents the target environment from lying yeah. and prevents the testing yeah. environment from being misled. So that's why I said you got it wrong there because we mi mixed yeah, which yeah. subject, which verb. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, so it's either this way um, or. I, hmm. I would prefer something like that prevents the target environment from manipulating the values. Or. 
Because the, the target environment is not saying anything, and if it's not saying anything, it can't lie. Misrepresenting the values, something like that. That would be better, yeah. Yeah. Confirm. Not not under control of the target environment. Um, although I think there's there's scenarios where you know some particular claim you could just say that this is this is the we are, have decided to trust the target environment in this case. Um, yep, that's true. In which case, this whole sentence would not be correct. Yeah. My biggest worry about the sentence is what is it committing people to? Yeah. So, so you, if it's the if the claim is not collected by the attesting environment, then it doesn't apply. Right. You're saying this might not be true for all claims, but then it'd have to be explicit that this is an untrusted, untrustworthy claim, right? At which the verifier can choose to do what it wants oh, with. Right. So I could put which claims yes. which are collected about the entire uh, my test environment. So GPS, uh, GPS location is a really good example. A tester is not going to have a, a GPS location engine in, in inside the attester. Um, and then you could say, what's the target environment? Is the target environment the satellite broadcasting the timestamp? Um, probably, <laughs> probably not. Uh, there are ways to do that securely, but uh, there are also plenty of ways to do it insecurely, as you're saying. How about this paragraph? Yeah, I like that. Two S's on this. Um, or no I, thought was, I, I thought somebody was just saying that this sentence is not necessarily true. Right. But we just said I added which because that meant it. So which are collected are collected in a way. So if they're not collected by the by the tar by the attesting environment, if they're self collected, then this doesn't apply. Sure, it does because they can be collected about the target environment by asking the target environment. Right. Okay. So I'm just wondering if it's simpler to just delete the sentence and leave it ending and claims need to be collected in the manner that's reliable, period. Or I'm hmm. going with you. I mean, I don't think anybody's uh, picked that. Nobody disagrees with the line 685, and I, there's so many different odd cases and stuff. I'm wondering if in the architecture document, if it's better to not go there and leave it to say, you know, the EAT document to talk about different cases and how they're encoded. I'm slightly worried about the use of the word need as opposed to should, right? Because as you said, I mean, you might do it in an insecure way, and if you know you're doing it in an insecure way, then, you know, you you still need it. You just can't get it. Right? <laughs> but I need it, Bodhi. Right. I need it. Right, right. The, the, so yeah, I, I think we should just remove it. It seems like that or trying to describe different some some. I'm just afraid that no matter what phrasing we're going to come up with, uh, where somebody's going to eventually come up with a case that that that's not true for. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It won't be easy to get that straight. I don't want to stop somebody from trying. If you want to keep trying, maybe you'll come up with a wording that I said, "Oh, yeah, that's cool." But I I somehow suspect you won't. I mean, I've I've actually done a fair amount of thinking about you know what is in what ways can things lie and what your dependencies are, and it gets pretty complex. I don't think we're going to solve that in a sentence. So removed. Um, so somebody wanted a comma added, but that was another change that uh, you did. Okay, great. Then would, would it be better to I see the result? Require having the right set of claims and claims about claims. Sorry, what are you suggesting? Text. Are you referring to? Uh, 
Is that related to 76? Was that Sarah? That was Peter, right? Yeah. It was Peter, yeah. Peter? So, I, I'm sorry, my phone had rung just at the same time that uh, I had spoke, so I, I kind of lost the train. Uh, so you I, what I was saying was that when talking about claims, what we really want to do is establish a this this claims that are evidence about a certain environment. Then there are claims about claims, which may come from other environments. Uh, and so the message that I think we want to convey is that the verifier has to know what claims are about and how to to verify that the claim is both accurately presented and it satisfies the need of the claim itself. So it seems like that, that, that paragraph is a place to say something like that. Okay. I, I guess I'm not disagreeing with you, but maybe I need to see some specific text to what you're suggesting. This is what we have now after this merge. Well, that looks like the text before the merge. Yeah, that doesn't look the same. Well, that. that looks like the text after the merge. Just a reminder, I have to drop in about two minutes. Yeah, I was just about to say that. In the evidence paragraph, um, there's one sentence that starts with claims instead of evidence. Should that be evidence instead? Here. Yeah. I have to drop momentarily, but I'm okay either way. I would I, accommodate claims that are uh, incorporated in evidence or something. I don't know what a constant evidence. <laughs> I think it's about the specific way how claims are handled in here to, in order to make uh, good evidence or actually evidence. So I think this use of claims is in the context of between the target environment and the attesting environment. Evidence is in the context of the attesting environment to the verifier. And we keep using the word claims all over the place anyway, so I don't think it's that weird that it shows up at the beginning, but I I've agree with you. Same. No, guys, whatever you decide here is fine with me on that one. Keep saying evidence, 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 evidence. So you're right. It does. It maybe. It maybe. Maybe it's uh, evidence, evidence, claims, evidence, evidence. It's but it's saying claims. Claims need to be collected. So that's the context is collection, which is between target environment and the testing environment. That's why the wording is different. Sarah, if you want to send a pull request rewriting it, that's welcome. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go back to here and let's just discuss. Did I not click on, did I not merge it? I thought I merged it. Um, so Hank says he's going to work on this one. Jerry, update trust model. Like, yeah, so Dave, Dave put in a bunch of comments. I need to look at them and, uh, see, uh, one is the deadline that you guys want me to do and get this in done. Uh, it's, it's, it's always good if you can get, get it in by noon on Monday. Okay. Cause we'll we, then we have enough time to think about, to, to refresh our memory for Tuesday morning. 
We'll give my action. That doesn't it. mean you can't do it this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Certainly. I mean, it's not like we'll forget, you know, so that's all. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So that's that. You're working on that one. That was 18 days ago. Um, this text we're going to think about. And we might have some issues. So I'm just going to flash the list of issues here. Um, Lawrence, is this, can I close this text, this one now? I think I can. We just opened a poll, we just opened a poll request dealing it with it. Okay. If you want to just, yeah, leave it there in the poll request. Sure. See, look, see, it's right here in 79. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah. I just um, left a comment there about the, the Google okay. search for good value. So. Role compositions. Pull request time sequence and table of time plot. So that's, uh, I'm going to leave it open. We're going to close it next week. One, three, these other things claims, class of claims for messages that transit entities and involving a role interactions. Lawrence, you've suggested we have a preferred serialization format. Did we get we get some we got some text that said something about this? I thought. Am I wrong? I thought you were going to say that sort of I don't know, it was profiles or some other documents we're going to recommend. We're going to recommend that another document have preferred serialization rather than the architecture having preferred serialization. Uh, that I, I absolutely saw, set, thought that, but I thought we also fixed some of the text in here in claims and coding formats to say, uh, to say what, to say that other documents need to have their specify their format. Um, Uh, let's come back to this, okay? Okay. So I'll leave that open. More thorough definition of endorser or endorsement. Uh, so I'm supposed to do something with this, so I haven't done anything with that. I'm sorry. Trust model section evidence consumed by an endorser. Hank. Evidence description misses the mark. Lawrence is supposed to, Ned is supposed to do something on this. I guess it's just really a question of do, can we assign from these two issues to somebody? Claim is used heavily, but not in the term terminology section. I believe we have added it to the terminology section. So let's close this. I tried to close it, but I didn't. If you say if you if you send a pull request close or closes or something another issue, then it's supposed to automatically close it. Okay, with there are the new issues we're meeting again next Tuesday. Okay. Next Tuesday is fine. Sorry, my uh, headphone died. Okay. Yeah, next Tuesday. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>